Hi, and welcome to Anime with Annie. In this video today, I'll be talking about everything we know about one of the most famous anime series out there, called Neon Genesis Evangelion. But before we get into it, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any updates from us. That said, now come, let's begin. Neon Genesis Evangelion is a Japanese animated television series that aired from October 1995 to March 1996 in Japan. It's presently available on Netflix. Neon Genesis Evangelion has become one of the most well-known anime series ever. Evangelion takes place 15 years after a global disaster in the futuristic and fortified metropolis of Tokyo 3. Shinji Nakari is a teenage boy who has been recruited by his father Gendo to operate a huge biomachine mecha named Evangelion into combat against monsters known as Angels by the nefarious organization Nerve. Now, let's have a clear understanding of what this anime series is based on. Synopsis Fifteen years after the tragedy that nearly ended the world, a silent specter floats through the ruins of a vanished city. Simultaneously, Shinji Nakari, a little boy waits to be picked up, practicing his reunion with his father who abandoned him. Tremors shake Tokyo 3 streets, as a massive and terrifying beast crashes to the ground. Shinjin will have to battle this beast, this angel, this divine messenger. As the pilot of Evangelion Unit 01, he and his fellow pilots will be in charge of the fate of the world. Nevertheless, in a world marked by violence and broken relationships, rescuing the world may be a simpler task than thinking you deserve to live in it. Review An apocalyptic vision of humanity's demise, or possibly a door into one's own personal doom. Glorious battles that highlight the fascination of mecha action, connected to a protagonist who wishes to never fight again. From a creative who appears to be at odds with his own audience, melodramatic excess, and razor-sharp tonal restraint. These shows' enormous success would permanently alter the anime industry, bringing series that respected the show's iconography while ignoring its basic principles. Neon Genesis Evangelion is a classic masterpiece that has finally been re-released. Neon Genesis Evangelion is now known more for its influence and legacy than for its actual substance, with its collection of DVD releases long out of circulation and no streaming alternatives until its recent Netflix acquisition. This is reasonable, the show has largely been accessible for almost a decade, yet its impact on the anime industry has been so great that anyone who has watched it can't help but notice its legacy in recent works. Hidaki Anno drew on his love of classic mecha, Tokusatu, Devilman, and much else to create something that influenced the world. His deeply personal tale shakes not only the narrative and thematic assumptions of anime, but also its economic delivery production, ushering in the age of modern late-night productions. It's a fascinating story, but now that the show is actually here, Eva's shadow appears to be lessening, or at the very least, finding its true source. Many of Evangelion's theoretically rebellious narrative choices were born in formative works for Anno, such as Space Runway Ideon, and even the original mobile suit Gundam wasn't an uncritical power fantasy. But Anno did bring a brutal acuity of a perspective to these materials, and perhaps more crucially, a tremendous directorial vision backed up by one of the best production teams ever created. Aside from its economic impact and genre satire, Eva's ongoing appeal stems to the fact that it is a beautifully performed show. Hidaki Anno is undoubtedly one of the most gifted directors in anime, having been mentored by Hoa Mizaki, tested on the brilliant Gunbuster, and nearly burned out by his experience on Nadia, the Secret of Blue Water, and Evangelion saw him surrounded by a stunning staff at the pinnacle of their powers. Yoshiyuka Satomoto, whose angular expressive style would dominate the classic age of Gan X productions, designed the characters. Storyboards and individual episodes helmed by future titans such as Seizu Mishuma, Full Metal Alchemist, Concrete Revolution, Tensayo Karma, Wolf's Reign, Darker Than Black, and Kazuo Turzumaki, as well as a slew of other equally talented directors who would follow Anno to Studio Karya. Yuji Nokoto from Revolutionary Girl Utena wrote several episode scripts. Miyotsu Uzu from Deno Koli did Crucial Animation, and there were countless others. Shiru Sakazu composed the soundtrack, which is known for its distinctive mix of classical music and urgent, scary originals. Many members of Evangelion's core team went on to have legendary careers in the industry, and many lesser-known names have continued to do superb work on Anno's rebuild of Evangelion projects. Neon Genesis Evangelion has a distinctive and the most interesting soundtracks out there. Not only me, but other people love to listen to their soundtrack and personally relate to them. However, discussing Evangelion's creator lineage is likely just another means of traversing the text itself. Eva's tremendous dramatic force is demonstrated right from the start of the act, when she conveys both the passionate and unexpected beauty of an angel attack with stunning grace. 
Staccato cuts provide little background as the camera moves through a tumultuous sea, complete with chopper blades roaring in a sensory assault. Then there's silence. Seagulls sunning on stationary tanks, a gigantic and unnatural beast gliding across a drowned metropolis. We meet Shinya Kari, our despondent protagonist, and then a strange mirage is shattered by violent sounds. Shinji's secret insecurities and the unusual magnificence of this silent metropolis were juxtaposed with the wrath of an angel attack. The first episode's layout, spacing, and narrative economy are amazing, and they serve as an early illustration of Evangelion's fantastic design work. The angels made up of smooth geometric shapes and that one famous faceplate, with its unreadable nature and fluid musculature appearing alien and off. The reaction team's urgent talk on the bridge, their individually reasonable but collectively unreadable worry, grew into a kind of anxiety music. The innovative and varied bridge monitor readings are capable of inducing heightened stress just by clinical language and visual disharmony. Many of Evangelion's decisions are made primarily for textual impact, even hints to larger conspiracies are later dropped, and neither the scientific nor theological jargon is especially coherent. Evangelion, on the other hand, is creating a distinct tonal backdrop for its actual drama, utilizing the dramatic force of old genre tropes to tell a totally different story. The essential components of that plot are presented during the first act, which blends typical mecha action with a great interest in Shinji Akari's psychology, as well as that of his classmates, co-pilots, and caretakers. Shinji's reconnection with his father establishes the terms of their relationship, with Gendo telling his son from above in an impenetrable glass room that he has a purpose for him, and that he must pilot the Eva. Shinji cowers in reaction despite Misato Kasuguri, his would-be guardian imploring him to do the unthinkable. Then Gendo introduces Rei Anonami, the substitute pilot, a girl who is so gravely injured that she can barely get out of her gurney. Shinji's real fight is so painful that he has no recollection of it, yet when he does his horror at what he witnessed is tempered by the tiniest sliver of validation from Misato, who tells his quiet back that he accomplished something commendable today. Evangelion is known for how it eventually abandons the traditional trappings of robot-on-monster drama, yet its middle act is both fiercely dedicated to pursuing its character-centric goals, and also an entertaining series of dramatic digressions in and of itself. The production team's profound skill, numerous influences, and imaginative staging elevate each episode into a separate work. There is no such thing as an average Evangelion episode. Episodes will be built around compelling concepts such as an overpowering countdown to a distinct calamity, fast crosscuts of dialogue that build an ensemble drama out of a diffuse situation, or foes that challenge the squad to examine the battlefield in a completely different way. There are, of course, the battles themselves. The robot on angel battles in Evangelion are a riveting mix of strangely different monster designs, inventive tactile setups, and magnificent terrifying battle animations. Few show can compare to Evangelion when it comes to depicting the real weight and size of giants in motion as their shaking bodies shake the land and create dust storms, as their expended shot shells drop to crush the automobiles beneath them. These battles are rarely staged to portray a sense of effortless grace or a thrilling triumph. Instead, they convey the fear of being locked in a small cage and forced to fight a faceless beast, while the only people you care about scream at you that you're going to die. One of Evangelion's greatest qualities is that no character in the program exists solely to serve a narrative purpose. Every member of the ensemble is a unique individual with their own set of beliefs, objectives, anxieties, and techniques of self-expression, as well as a variety of deception mechanisms. The show is a clear metaphor for the fear of becoming an adult, but is also closely linked to Ano's thinking, the personal despair that shaped the show's run and the emotional hope that brought it to a close. His love-hate relationship with Otakari identity is expressed in characters like Rai, the mother-wife of such great interest to both Freud and rejection of her as anime viewers and is baked into the show's violent interpretation of classic power fantasies. Every episode of Evangelion is infused with Anno's personal battle with his own sense of self-worth, and it's a testament to both his vision and his team's immense strength that the resulting show doesn't feel cliché-ish or unrelatable at it all. Instead, its expression of personal pain feels not only universal but actually joyful. This is a show about earnestly wanting to be closer to the others, but being too afraid of the pain of doing so. This is a show about enduring personal trauma while still reaching out and grasping the trembling hands at your side. This is a show about failing, despairing, and slowly getting back on your feet, despite the fact that there is no guarantee that things will ever genuinely improve. This is a show about how, no matter how difficult it may seem, we must never, ever give up attempting to fully connect and understand one another. This is a show about finding hope in the face of oblivion, in the human flame that can never fully die. 
this is a performance that shows us at our worst and says, yes, these miserable and terrible humans too are completely deserving of love. It's Evangelion and we're blessed to have it. And that concludes my review of Neon Genesis Evangelion. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel, Anime with Annie, for more such exciting anime content and reviews. And please leave comments about what you thought of today's video. Bye.